Hello and thank you. My name is Hamid Montessori and I'm the director of software engineering for the digital accelerator part of Stanley Black & Decker. And I'm really pleased to have the opportunity to share with you the journey that we've been through in the past two years with the help of Aaron, who is the CTO of one of our partners, Clearblade. Uh, most of you probably have heard of the name. Uh, we are a diversified industrial that are organized along three verticals, 175-year-old company. Uh, the biggest vertical that we operate in is the tools and storage business, where we are number one in the world. And we manufacture and create the type of tools that a lot of customers use to create their own and manufacture their own products and uh, go for creation of new buildings and construction environments. Uh, while uh, the tools and storage business is about 65 to 70% of the company, we have significant presence, billion dollar plus, in two other verticals. One vertical is the world of security, be it uh, commercial security, electronic security, or mechanical access. The industrial vertical has two components. We play in the world of infrastructure, when you also have a significant presence in the engineering fastening world. Between 25 to 50 billion connected devices by 2020, it's a large number of devices. In fact, if you get the boxes and connect them together, you'll probably get to the orbit of Pluto. And about four to six trillion dollars of revenue opportunity. Again, a massive number, and that's why a lot of companies participate and focus in this field. With that said, uh, we wanted to talk a little bit about one of the pieces of research that Gartner did. What they discovered was that 62% of the companies that are active in the world of implementing IoT do the type of work that we do at the Stanley Black & Decker. They lead their own developments and they work with partners such as Clearblade in order to achieve their vision. How do you get started in the world of IoT? That was uh, a problem that we looked at for multiple business units that came to us and wanted us to help them. We found that there are three step, four steps that you want to kind of move along. The first one is to identify the opportunities, of course. And certainly customer needs, voice of customer is important here. Marketing research is very important here. But never forget about innovation. The second part is to actually develop technical competency. As a company, you really need to know what's going on. The world of IoT is a vast arena of different technologies. You need to know about a lot of them. And you need to be able to define guiding principles as to how you want to put together your platform and your business. The next step is to select partners. Again, because the world of IoT is so fast, no single company can do everything. So you need, you can't just do it all yourself. You need partners in most cases, and you need quite a few partners. And finally, you want to start executing on projects. Just talking is not enough. We found that we had five pillars that we wanted to put our vision, base our vision on those. The first one was security. We wanted to have an open environment, we wanted to leverage open source and have an open platform that people could integrate with so that we could replace technologies if needed, language if needed. Open being open was important for us. Uh, IoT is all about being distributed. You have uh, a lot of sensors and actuators and edge devices that are spread over a wide area. So the system needs to be following the well-known distributed system design has to be reliable. You heard about hugs and the fact that you want to secure fence. There are health and security applications where you can't tolerate the fact that there is no connectivity to the cloud potentially, or you have a network split. And finally, you want to be scalable because there are hundreds of thousands of sensors and actuators that you're going to connect together. So when we looked at this stuff, we came up with a layering system that you can see also in the literature as well. We have our own twist on it. Basically, you can see horizontal lines that define concerns that are self-contained. And then there are three main vertical uh, cross-cutting concerns. The cross-cutting concerns are typically security billing and monitoring. You need to monitor your system. You need to be able to bill for your internal and, and, and external customers. And you need to be able to provide security. In the world of Internet of Things, connectivity is not just limited to Wi-Fi. A lot of devices have Wi-Fi connectivity, but you need more than that. For example, a lot of products nowadays use Bluetooth low energy in order to pair with a phone and then use the phone as a gateway to send data to an IoT backend. A lot of IoT systems are very sensitive to latency. You can't always go to the cloud and come back. 
So it's very important to have solutions at the edge, maybe in a factory that is not connected to the cloud, or the connectivity is very spotty in that factory. That way you can react to the data that your sensors gather and generate your control inputs locally. At a higher level for analytics, you want to make sure that you can provide visualization and maybe reporting and real-time reporting using artificial intelligence and machine learning and those sophisticated uh, capabilities. Um, so, you know, when we look at where Stanley is today, they've taken these guiding principles, openness, security, distributed, scalability, all of those guided principles today are encapsulated with their IoT platform. This IoT platform that they can take, they can reuse across their business units, scale with their business units, enforce security with their business units, but yet then still do this integration, this user experience, whether it's on a, an Echo or an Apple Watch or an iPad or on a, on a web page. Uh, the vendors who are going to come in and do positioning with ultra wideband or BLE or RFID, moving those folks in and out as needed for best of breed. The integrations, the stuff that one business unit figures out that another business can reuse, or the machine learning, the analytics, the intelligence, pushing that off to the best of breed cloud vendor or on premise, wherever you want to do it. Ultimately, bringing intellectual property in that they own and running and tying all this together. But if we go back in time and look at two years ago, the, the first thing that Stanley communicated to me was, we actually know a lot about IoT. Stanley has multiple IoT products, and two years ago were best of breed products, whether it was in healthcare, whether it was in manufacturing, whether it was in energy and oil and gas. They had a number of solutions that were ranked by analysts and vendors as the top in their marketplace. They also had been doing their digital innovation. So the digital accelerator was, was new in existence at the time. Um, and this group wasn't about just building solutions. It was about how do we focus on the business to give the businesses that we have uh, the, the power and need they need. They specifically hit on speed and efficiency. Pilots that take two months, that's important. How do we get there and try this stuff out? Um, how do we enhance the products we have? We don't want to throw away what we've got. We've got to work with this and enhance what we have. Um, engage our customers and ultimately, Stanley's a big company. There's lots of folks to bring together. If we can you know, increase the power of that, get the reuse, collaborate, there's a lot of opportunity. So you know, that's what they came with and why they presented to us in sort of beginning. And, and really, when we looked at what the challenge they had with what was going on, it was really about the ecosystem. It was slow. There was pain points of making two things work together. Finding the right people within the organization to help was, was expensive. Uh, upgrading their customers to new things wasn't nearly what they wanted it to be. The experience serving the customer, like we just heard, as being so important wasn't what it was. And the last one, which was pretty big, is the lost opportunity. And this is something that Stanley's customers could actually explain very well right back to them. They could very much say, I own the small tool solution, I own the big tool solution, I own the access management solution. If there was a story here, I would get a lot more value of all these things that I bought from you. And I think this is important because it's not just Stanley. Stanley's got lots of verticals, but this exists in smarter buildings or connected buildings. How do we connect power management to building management systems, to lighting, to residential services? It's an ecosystem challenge. Uh, we look across other groups, uh, other, other industries, transportation that's coming in, or insurance. Insurance is trying, how do we connect the home and the automobile manufacturers, all these different things together that are on their own right solutions, but bringing them together in a common way. That's what Stanley came with and wanted to address. Um, and they really brought, I guess, three core principles when they, when they began talking to us. The first was a developer focus. Um, how do you self-serve your developers? Uh, how do you empower your partners, your integrators, your internal developers, your digital accelerator developers to do what they want to do quickly on their own? Give them a platform that they can are empowered to work with. Obviously, API first. Let it be an integration kind of model out of the box. But the other core tenet was is we've got a lot of developers and a lot of different tool sets and processes that are working today. Don't break them. So that first thing was extensibility of making the developers' lives easier. The next thing they said is, you can't pick any technologies and force any technologies on us. 
That's, that's a hard requirement. Um, but ultimately what that meant was is there is going to be a constant evolution of best of breed hardware and devices. Stanley wants to be able to engage those ecosystems. There's going to be a constant movement of what's the best programming language, what are our developers know, um, what protocols do we want to use. We heard MQTT, we heard HTTP, but there's a whole plethora that out there that are continuing to go. Um, so we had to make sure that we, their platform could support this ecosystem of, of lots of different things and enterprise software vendors. The final one was a little counterintuitive at the time with regard to developer focus, and that was it had to be metered. Um, that's incredibly important in our day and age of how do we start making new products. If you're going to do as a service product, you have to be able to meter in all sorts of new and unique ways. It could be per device, per drill. It could be per uh, transaction. So how much do you use the drill? What kind of data are you doing? How much compute does it take? It could be how many times did you turn the screw, right? We don't know what their businesses are going to want to do. The next thing that I see, and, and I heard it at Stanley, but I hear it lots of folks, um, specifically smarter cities, are, are very concerned about future-proofed based solutions. The first tenet of, of future-proofing is being extensible. That means you can add. You've got a framework in place where you can put new functionality in, um, and you can grow the solution. The next piece is unopinionated. And I love the drone photo, because right now, we all have opinions about drones. They're pretty cool toys, right? And so if we were to be very opinionated about them now, we'd put them into a thing that we can fly and be up and down, and that's kind of how we view them. But the future of drones isn't about being a toy. It's about having a camera and being an actor in a security system or being an actor in a surveying system. And there's going to be all sorts of views and understandings of about that thing coming forward and in the future that we need to be ready for and ready to manipulate around. Um, so the platform itself that they wanted had to be very unopinionated. Today we want to uh, run our solution on one place, but we might want to move it on premise later for our security version, or we might want to uh, just move it because we like to make sure we can move it, right? I don't know what the reasons, but you have to be able to do that if you're going to have longevity out of the solutions that you build. Continuing future proof in that portability was all about deployment. Two years ago, Stanley's asking, show me how you do the container-based deployment. Show me how you can stand this stuff up, scale this stuff up, move it to any cloud that you want to do. Leverage different cloud services for when AI is best here versus compute's best here. How do you handle that deployment and make sure we're flexible, future-proof us against these changes? Um, and then the on-premise, right? Um, Cloud's awesome, we see a lot of work going there, but there's still the use cases of let's keep this behind our firewall, this is healthcare data, this is in our hospital, uh, this is critical to our business, let's keep it close. Open standards, being part of the open community was core to what they, Stanley was working to do. Two years ago, Stanley very clearly articulated the need for a full platformed edge that could do every bit of their IoT solution running on the gateway, running in the factory, running in the rural remote environments. The full function of the edge meant the security model had to be there, security out of the gate. Stanley's always talked about, we don't want these devices that we make at large scale being vulnerable. So the security model had to be at the edge. The full capability for doing the AI, the machine learning, the studying of the data, the raking the data, the grooming the data, the logic of everything that needs to happen should be able to run at that functional edge. The final uh, requirement is about the uptime. Uh, it's so important to make sure that if we're going to introduce IoT into our existing factories, our existing manufacturing, our existing warehouses where we have SLAs, where we have requirements to keep uptime, we can't introduce new failure points. We need our IoT solutions to stay up 100% of the time. And then when they do go down or we lose connectivity to the cloud, we need them to recover. So very much all about how do we guarantee the uh, stability of our IoT solutions by leveraging the edge architecture. And if you look at that and what Stanley's been able to do, they've been able to give themselves a core IoT platform that lets them engage their developers very quickly, being developer focused, lets them innovate, 
protects them from a lot of the constant change we're still seeing in IoT and able to adapt to new protocols and, and, and enrich their current solutions. And then ultimately have an architecture that scales incredibly well uh, or and scales to, to huge levels um, and gives them the full stability and function they actually need for all of their solutions. As the field of IoT is so new and emergent, there is ample opportunity and need for actually working with the startups because they tend to be the vanguard of new technologies and working on that. So I really recommend uh, everyone who's working in the field of IoT want to partner with companies to actually look at the startups as well. That's a great way to get access to new technology implemented in the right way.